the 16 inch and the 14 inch MacBook Pros just got here. I'm super excited to get these open and take a look at them. These are a significant upgrade from the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which wasn't really a MacBook Pro, but that's a topic for another video. So let's get these unboxed, see what comes with each laptop. We'll set them up and then I'll give you my first impressions. So starting out with the 14 inch model, I got the base model with the M1 Pro chip. So I've got 16 gigs of unified memory. I've uh, got an eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU. We'll get to the display. We'll get to all the rest of that stuff very soon, but let's get this thing open. Obligatory. I don't even know if you could have heard, if you heard that. Now I can tell you even without opening these that these are significantly heavier than the 13 inch MacBook Pro, definitely the MacBook Air. So like this, just this box, just it feels heavy and let alone that one. Even the person at the Apple store was like, that's really heavy. All right, so let's, let's see what's inside. I'm like so excited to see this. Look at that. Oh yeah, I mean, this is, this is like immediately noticeably heavier. <laughs> this is like a beast of a laptop if I'm comparing it to the 13 inch. And like I said, for both of these, I got the base model because that's what was available today. I'm also getting maxed out versions of both. So I'll be able to do more detailed comparisons very soon. Uh, so this one weighs, I think three and a half pounds, which is uh, pretty serious. The 14 inch eight core CPU model comes with a 67 watt USB-C power adapter. And as soon as you move up to a 10 core CPU, then you get upgraded to a 96 watt power adapter. Now, if you still want this version, but you wanna upgrade, you could do that for 20 bucks. The 16 inch version is only offered with a 10 core CPU, and it comes with a monstrous 140 watt adapter, which I'll get to in just a minute. And we also have a MagSafe cable. Thank you, MagSafe. We'll come back to this, MagSafe. It's nice. It looks nice. It's, it's very solid. This is a very solid looking laptop. Right off the bat, we've got all these ports on both sides. We've got an SD card slot, which I love because this way I don't have to bring a dedicated card reader with me. We've got an HDMI 2.0. It's not 2.1, uh, but it's great. You could still use it for an external display if you want to. We've got one of the three Thunderbolt 4 ports that have support for DisplayPort and USB 4. Having all these ports means that you can charge the MacBook from both sides, but I really like the fact that we have MagSafe 3 on the left here this way. If a cable gets knocked out by your dog whose name happens to be Mac and likes to run around the house like a crazy dog, again, hypothetically speaking, if that were to happen, your laptop would be safe. And then finally, we also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left. So you can use headphones or you can use a headset and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna leave this one over here. I'm gonna get the 16 inch one open really quickly. And this one has uh, also the M1 Pro 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, still 16 gigabytes of unified memory. And you can get this exact same configuration on the 14 inch version for an extra 300 bucks. And both of these can be upgraded to 32 gigs of unified memory. This box is huge. This thing is crazy heavy. Like it's heavy, let me tell you. And by the way, if you wanna go with the M1 Max chip, then you can upgrade both of these to a maximum of a 32 core GPU and then all the way up to 64 gigs of unified memory, which is absolutely insane. We'll talk more about these configurations later on. So let's get this thing open. That is just bananas. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh my God, that's crazy. And here are the two chargers side by side. So this one is 67 watts. This one is 140. Both are USB-C. Look at this monster. And it is, this is a heavy laptop. I mean, we're, we're gonna come back to this later on, but looks identical, looks great. Uh, but again, definitely, Definitely a giant, giant laptop. So this is the size difference. Can we see that? Yeah, there you go. This is the size difference. So now let's go ahead and get these turned on. I can't wait to see what this new display looks like. And this is obviously because these are so heavy and the display is so light, super easy. Yeah, okay. 
I wasn't sure how the black keyboard is going to look in real life, but it looks super nice. Let me see how these keys feel. They say these feel like mechanical keys. I wouldn't say that. They feel really nice. This is a really nice laptop keyboard. It doesn't feel like a mechanical keyboard, but it is probably one of the best keyboards that I've used on a laptop. I'll include more details in my uh, dedicated review. We've got this cool little, everything in black looks actually really cool. This trackpad is absurdly big. I can like, almost fit my hand on it. Now, another thing that you're gonna notice right away is that there's no more touch bar. I personally like the touch bar. I know a lot of people didn't. I actually really like the way these keys look. They look like they're the same size keys as the rest of the keys on the board, which is nice. From a tactile standpoint, it is easier. Like you know where the key is and you know what it does. Uh, whereas on the touchpad, you did have to look at it. And I don't ever think that they really took advantage of what they had with it. But it's gone. Lots of you are super happy. So let's move forward. All right. I also just turned the brightness up on both of these. And the display is amazing. It's way brighter than the previous one. So we're up and running with both. The display, again, is just awesome. It's the Liquid Retina XDR display, you know, extreme dynamic range. So it's the same mini LED technology that we saw on the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So we're getting deeper blacks, we're getting a thousand nits of sustained brightness, and then 1600 peak brightness for HDR content. There's a million to one contrast ratio on this, so we should have really good contrast. It's trying to time out on me, but I'm not gonna let it. We're also getting ProMotion with both of these displays, and that's Apple's adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 hertz. So basically, in real time, both of these MacBooks will adjust the refresh rate all the way up to 120 based on what you're doing. But then if I'm watching a movie or if I'm scrolling or if I'm opening apps or doing anything where that higher refresh rate would give me a better user experience, then it's gonna bump that up. And it's always maximizing, again, both the refresh rate and the battery life, which is awesome. And just in case you're a video editor and you're worried about this, you can actually lock the refresh rate at whatever matches your footage while you're working. That way you don't have to worry about it changing. Now, one of the limitations of the 13 inch MacBook Pro had to do with external displays. So if you're using the M1 Pro, you can add up to 260 Hertz 6K displays. And if you're using the M1 Max, which I'll get to later on, then you can do up to three of those 60 Hertz 6K displays plus another 4K display. So that's a lot. In this notch, we have a 1080p camera. There is no face ID in case you were wondering. I really wish that they would have added it. I get the argument about why it wouldn't work exactly like on the phone. I wouldn't actually need it to work for like purchases or anything like that, but it would be sweet if you could just unlock using Face ID. All right, so as far as this notch, watching YouTube, obviously there's a black bar at the top, so I can't even see the notch. If it means that I get to have a bigger screen because that's not really a piece of real estate that I would use, yeah, I can see it, but I'd rather have more display than sort of like a bigger forehead. Would it be a forehead? I guess it's not a chin, it's a forehead. Um, but I'll, I'll get back into that in the more detailed review as well. I do like that they upgraded this camera, so we're no longer using the 720p that we got on the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. This is 1080p, and it's supposed to be twice as good as far as its low light performance. So we'll be doing some tests with that. Now let's test out these speakers future, it's going to look brand new and I'm going to get the most money for it. Now, because the iPad mini six is so small, a traditional keyboard case like a magic keyboard isn't going to work. It simply wouldn't be wide enough for you to come. That's crazy. On face. I wirelessly pair the MX keys mini with my iPad mini. I put the iPad on a stand and then I'm good to go. This keyboard has a full row. Of well, dedicated there's like no way. There is no way that I would have this at max volume. Like you just don't need to. But these sound like for laptop speakers. They sound ridiculous. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in seeing if the speakers will sound the same on both of these. I'll definitely include that in the comparison. Now looking at the batteries on the 14 inch, we have a 70 watt hour lithium ion battery with up to 17 hours of video playback and 11 hours of wireless web browsing. Moving on to the 16, we have a 100 watt hour battery with 21 hours of video playback and 14 hours of wireless web browsing. 
Now you're going to hear me talk about the performance of both of these laptops and the two different chips. You're also gonna see a lot of comparisons with other laptops in the next couple of weeks. What's really amazing about the M1 Pro with up to 200 gigabytes per second in memory bandwidth and then the M1 Max with up to 400, isn't just the performance itself. Like, yes, that's impressive. That's part of it. There's more to it. It's even more impressive when you look at it as a function of power consumption. So in essence, you're looking at efficiency. So yes, these are incredibly powerful laptops, as are some other laptops on the market. But what these MacBooks can do is reach that same or a similar level of performance while using up a lot less power. And they're also able to achieve that same level of performance on battery power which no other laptop can do. I'm super excited to start testing these and work on more detailed reviews and comparisons. So let me know in the comment section if you have any questions that you want me to cover. Now I wanna quickly talk about who should get what. And if you're getting one of these, it really comes down to size and battery life. You can spec both with the same chip, the same maximum number of CPU and GPU cores, and the same maximum unified memory and internal storage. Now I still expect the 16 inch to outperform the 14 inch in very extreme cases because it has a larger thermal envelope, but I need to actually test that and see how well these fans work. I actually expect them to work beautifully because the one on the 13 inch MacBook Pro was already incredible. And I'm also gonna compare these to the 13 inch model so we can see that difference in performance and how this different body and design helps achieve even more. So when you're looking at these, I want you to think about whether you want a larger display with better battery life or a smaller and more portable device. Now that you watched my first impressions, check out this video right here. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.